duck. Hey Sam. Yes, Tiger. What do you call cheese that doesn't belong to you? Nacho cheese? <clears throat> I know that one. I know. At last, the LGBT revolution has been signalled. Anxiety is a frickin' tool of a thing. ADHD, like a lot of disabilities and mental illnesses, very frequently comes with a side order of anxiety, primarily because ADHD makes everything feel really overwhelming all the time, forever, leading you to feeling like you're about to drown in a pit filled with rats that scream in high-pitched human voices about all of the things you have to do and all of the ways you've failed. This week's game is about a very specific subset of anxiety, social anxiety, and instead of existing in a pit filled with rats, it instead thrusts you into the position of a cluster of reasonably intelligent hive-minded rats, all of whom have quite bad social anxiety issues. How long will you be able to hold your form for while you play Keep It Together? Releasing on July 30th by Fanrelli Anya, Keep It Together will be available on itch.io for $5. It's a game that seemingly defies genre classification, where your main goal is to navigate a series of increasingly stressful social situations with nothing but a vague idea about the personalities of the people you're dealing with and a rising sense of dread. This premise in and of itself is quite novel, however what adds to the stakes here is that you're not a human, but a trench coat stuffed to bursting with a hive mind of rats of above average intelligence. Of course, as rats with extreme social anxiety, the more faux pas you make, the more seemingly wrong things you say, the more you upset those you're talking to, the harder it becomes to maintain your passably human facade. Slowly, your swarm begins to lose itself, and eventually you spill out, scurrying in all directions, never to be seen again. There are two main mechanics in Keep It Together. First up is the conversation dynamic. A friend or acquaintance approaches you, makes some kind of comment, and expects a response. For any given prompt, you're given a choice of four potential answers, with the correct one being determined by the personality of the person you're talking to. Thankfully, for those of us with working memory issues, a list of qualities you've learned about each of your friends is displayed on screen at all times, which is a welcome accessibility feature. Should you misinterpret the situation and say the wrong thing, the second mechanic comes into play keeping it together. This mechanic is really interesting to me, super novel. If you say something wrong, you have to hold down a key on your keyboard. If you say something else wrong, you have to hold down, simultaneously, a second key, then a third, then a fourth, then a fifth, and how many keys can your system handle at once? How many until outside forces cause you to fall apart? Having to hold down these keys is, in my experience, actually pretty aptly analogous to having a series of internal thought processes mentally flagellating you for messing up. What I would absolutely love to see done with this though, is like what Western Press did at PAX last year when they brought the DDR map to demonstrate their product. But instead of DDR, I want to see like some kind of awesome digital twister style map where each circle is its own letter and you have to contort yourself into increasingly convoluted shapes and yeah, that's the perfect metaphor for my brand of social anxiety. Finishing up, Keep It Together is a really great game. It's got a simple concept, fantastically stylized cutout graphics, and it's almost impossible to master, which is definitely by artistic design, because a piece exemplifying social anxiety shouldn't be easy. I've left a link to Fenrelianya's itch.io store page in the comments, and you should definitely bookmark it for when this comes out. If you've got a spare five bucks, go and pick up a copy as soon as it becomes available. I don't know who these people are, but I'm glad they found love and have permanently etched it into the concrete.
with ADHD have brains that work in heaps different ways to people without ADHD and because of how people with ADHD are more likely to have additional mental illnesses like anxiety and depression, quite often we suffer from nightmares or their aggressive cousins, night terrors. I don't really understand the science behind this because I'm just a tiny mouse person but I wanted to talk about night terrors because I think they're really interesting. So I thought, um, yeah, because even though everyone talks about bad dreams, barely anyone talks about good dreams. And so I want to share all of the things that make me wake up screaming at night. And I hope that you do the same thing with me when I'm done. The first night terror I can remember having is this one where I get dropped off at preschool. Except when I go inside the building, it's like this endless sea of rolling green meadows and all of the other kids are playing and making daisy chains and I'm going down to play too and then suddenly this alarm goes off and I'm running through a maze of metal gangways in the air and I can't find anybody to help me and then eventually I find this one door with a biohazard symbol on it except I never knew what a biohazard symbol meant back then and then I beat my tiny little mouse fist on the door and just when I'm about to give up, it busts open and this big scary bird in a Hannibal Lecter mask jumps out at me and I wake up. They say that dreams and nightmares is meant to mean something or tell you something or something something but I don't know. I think sometimes they're just messed up, right? Like this one time I had this nightmare where it started out as a dream. I made a whole bunch of really nice friends at this school that I was going to. Um, but then, and everything was going heaps great until I worked out that I was dreaming and then my friends started explaining how if I woke up they'd all stop existing and how that's basically the same thing as doing a murder and stuff. Then friends don't go around murdering their friends, they just don't. I don't know what made me wake up from that dream but I think it was my alarm for school. I do know that I spent the whole day questioning if what was real. Dreams have this really messed up ability to do that, to make you question what's real and what's not, and to leave you shaken and, and crying out for your mummy and daddy. I think the worst night terror I ever had, quite recently it was actually, um, it started off pretty normal, kinda tame by my standards, I was going about my normal fun weekend stuff when suddenly there was this chainsaw wielding murder man doing that slow hunt thing that they do in nightmares where they just come for you and you can't run and it was no big deal they almost got me and then I'll wake up and everything and that's what happened then sure enough boom the chainsaw hit my soft fuzz and I woke up in bed and then I started going about my rest of my day because I'd woken up and then a few hours later I think um then what happened was I was on the school bus to school and um, the bus stopped and then a noise came and then um, the chainsaw man got me again and I woke up again and then uh, then I started going about my day again and I was pretty rattled by this point in time and then I got to school and this time the chainsaw man came again and it just kept happening again and again and again and I kept waking up and I can't remember the full number of times it happened, but I think it was at least 15, it was probably actually more. When I woke up for real, I couldn't stop wondering, is this it? Am I done? Is this my life now? Am I being trapped in some kind of twilight zone punishment cycle? Ha! It was horrible. I wonder if other people have real bad night terrors too. You can tell me about your bad dreams if you like. Or you could make positive stuff happen and you could tell me about your good dreams because I just want to hear about stuff about you. Just tell me something please, okay, goodbye. In a poll asking what fruit people most identified with, the answer was overwhelmingly in favour of limes for some reason, which a lot of you seemed to be very happy about. Why do you all identify with limes so much? Check back for another poll very soon. It'll be on Twitter. Hmm. Life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. 
Race cars, lasers, airplanes, it's a duck blur. We might solve a mystery or rewrite history. DuckTales, woo! Well, that's too high pitched, I can't do this, no, woo! This is just embarrassing, I'm gonna stop.